Hi, everybody. Before we get to another great interview, we could really use your help. IMDB, which is the entertainment database, recently named the Two Opinionated Podcast one of its top 100 podcasts. This is a monumental feat for this program. You know, we're a father and son team out of a small town in West Virginia, have been doing this for about five years. There's 15 million podcasts out there. About 40,000 of those get to the point that they're listed on IMDb. Out of those 40,000 out of the 15 million, we are ranked number 82. Something that we're just immensely proud of. We're so thankful for our listeners, our watchers, our fans. Thank you so, so much. If you would like to help us out and we're asking for it, please. Um, it's easy. It's real, it, it's really easy. It's free. If you go to IMDB, that's IMDB.com, look up two opinionated podcasts and just take a look at the page. That's all you have to do. I mean, you're welcome to look at the cast, look at the episodes so you can kind of see who's been on the program. Do whatever you want, but even just bringing up the page, imdb.com, Two Opinionated Podcast, bring up the page, look at it. That helps us so much. So please, if you can do anything, we would really appreciate that. Um, our YouTube channel is MeisterCon Pod. Love to have your subscription there. It's also free. And you can also check out our website, MeisterCon.com, where you'll find almost 700 episodes, audio and video, available on there. There's also a terrific blog from Brett, and it'll let you know anything that we have going on in studio, if we're covering a convention, if we're going on location, anything that we have going on will be on the website, MeisterCon.com. Thank you guys so, so much. We appreciate you so much much. I, I can't express enough how appreciative we are of all of you. We never, never expected to, to do as well as, as we have, and that's all because of you. Thank you so much. Enjoy that interview. Bye, everybody. Hi, everybody. Welcome to another edition of Two Opinionated. I'm so excited today. I have got digital creator how phonics with me. So welcome. Thank Pleasure. you so much for doing the show. I, I was telling you, I'm loving your stuff. It's so different. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Thank you so much for your time as well. Yeah, of course. I'm happy, uh, happy to do it. I, uh, I've been watching some of your, uh, uh, some of your live streams and they're, they're hilarious. At the, so we'll get into that. I want to kind of know where where all that came from. But introduce yourself a little bit. Uh, tell us uh, your background. You know what you grow up uh, or grew up doing. You know, and then how'd you transition into kind of uh, the digital side? No, absolutely. Thank you. Uh, so my name is uh, John. Uh, my online name is Hyphonics. And in terms of content creation, live streaming, and making content on social media, it's been about nine years now that I've been doing it. Um, only in about this past year, things have really ramped up with, you know, scaring people and being the creepy bald guy. Uh, but I started doing content creation when I was in high school at the age of 18, right as my senior year was coming to a conclusion. Um, and before that I was just doing school. Uh, I did have aspirations to go into college and do a lot of different types of things that my family wanted me to do, but I didn't know exactly what that was going to be for me and what that entailed. Yeah. Uh, I started streaming content at in the middle, I think towards the end of the school year. And that was this the whole intention was just to play a mobile game called Clash of Clans. Uh that was literally the only game. <laughs> yeah, it's a great game. It's a great game. I it still is a good game. I still play it time and time. Uh, but I started playing that in high school and I wanted people to join my clan. I would be walking around school just like on my phone telling people to join my clan, but I wanted to get 50 people. So I was like, I think the best way is to go live, get people to join. And think that's what I'm going to do. And I only, I probably only have to do that maybe one or twice. And I'll be done. Uh, I did that. Got a few people in the clan. I got really excited. I was like, wow, this is great. Cool. But I'm really enjoying this whole being on the camera and yeah. talking. This is, this is kind of fun. And it quickly evolved into so much more than just playing a mobile game. Um, and it's something that I started doing full time right out the gate. And 
the beautiful thing is I just had so much free time because I was still in school and I didn't really have a job that I needed to fully go to uh, at the time. I was just helping my dad do construction work. So it wasn't too demanding on time. So I just gave it all my time. And over over a few months, I just started going into it every single day and many years with different evolutions of different things from gaming to in real life to different ideas to Omegle and to where I am today, scaring people for a living. No, it's kind of it's kind of crazy. And when you say you've been at it uh, for nine years, on yeah. one side you're like, well, that's a pretty good chunk of time. But uh, for for digital creating, nine years is a ton of time. Oh yeah, you know, what I mean, it's it's not like you know I've been working, uh, you know, as a as a construction worker for nine years, so I got nine years experience with that, and I've learned some stuff. I can you know do some stuff, you know, with digital creating, it changes so fast that mm-hmm. you have to learn like quick and then oh. keep up with it. So nine years, I mean, that's it. it it's stressful is not the word, but it's a little stressful because there's so much to stay on top of uh, with, you know, the whole social media thing. No, absolutely. Stressful is definitely an understatement. I think it's more of like always at the back of the mind thinking what's going to be the next thing, Right. Um, which over the years I have changed my content from, you know, from one game to the next game to the next game and to the next game. And then as time went on, I realized, you know, I really want to break out of this and I want to try something even different. Uh, and it's, it's a lot of risk factor that I was taking in order to really get to where I am today which is mostly just personality driven and scaring people and making that kind of content from what I first started. So I, I, I'd say it's a lot of risk uh, aspects as well, too. Just trying something new all the time. All the time. Uh, well, you have to find what works. Yeah, of course. Yes. Yeah. And it's uh, it's it's not like it's a non-competitive landscape. Oh, There's it's so much content out there. You know, how, how did you have the patience over that nine years to kind of hang in there until you got to the point where your audience was big enough that you could be like, okay, now I can try some stuff. Well, so like I said, I've been doing it for so long and I I did find some general great success in the very beginning, which was where I was able to really just put all my time and effort. Even on my, uh, my first year of streaming, I was able to get picked up by an organization called team liquid and commentate esport events for them, uh, for their game uh, at the time, which was uh, clash Royale. And that just gave me, a, such a drive and push to keep trying different things. I, I think what's been really the thing that's kept me going for this long, the biggest motivating factor as well, is the fact that I do everything all live. Everything is done live. So whenever I fail, I am met with immediate criticism of like, what you just did was garbage. What you just did was great. And with that, I'm able to base off, okay, let's never do that again. Let's focus on trying to do that again. And with that immediate come back to you know reality i've been able to really hone in and try my absolute best to you know appease people and have them tell me what i should do and you know try different things and let them know hey what do you guys think about this i think that's just been the biggest motivation and the biggest thing that's been able to give me patience and understanding is failing is fine um that's how i've been able to really try so many different things and get where i am today it's just from the community that i built uh, you know, through trial and error, and honestly, just immediate feedback. Yeah, is it, 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 it's a little bit similar to doing like stand up comedy. Yeah. You're getting that kind of immediate feedback where a lot of times on social media, it's you get feedback fairly quick a lot of times, but yeah. it's not always immediately. Like you're alive. So if you say something or do something that somebody doesn't like, you're going to hear about it like right then. Yeah, that and that's I think that's also just the thing that's really guided me in the right direction of a lot of things. Cause you know, if someone's like, Hey, you should try this, all right, I'll give it a try. Doesn't work out. I'll be like, Well, your idea was dumb, but I tried it. Uh, <laughs> or I'll try something myself. I'll think of my own idea, give it a go. People let me know that was great, or that needs to be changed like that. Uh, and I think that's what's really helped me guide really and hone in like what I could do uh and what I could do better. And With that evolution, I've been able to get to where I am today right now with such a massive amount of, you know, great reactions and such a audience that just keeps growing just because they keep on telling me what I should be doing next or how I should do things. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And that's I think that's a terrific way to to kind of develop, you know, a program or or something that you're offering, you know, just that's the people you're trying to reach. So if they're if it's something that they want, then why not try it? 
Mm -hmm. No, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's stressful. Yeah. <laughs> It's well, special. yeah, of course it is. So, so you mentioned, you know, you've kind of evolved over time. So now you're doing more uh, uh, of some of the stuff with the jump scares in it. To describe that, what what is that? If somebody tunes in to to watch, what are they going to see? What are you doing that uh, involves a scare? So with the live streams, it's a lot of trial and error. There are days that I get lucky. And I just get reaction after reaction. And it is just a beautiful, beautiful, just one after the other. I'm scaring people. Most days, it is failure after failure. <laughs> I'm scared. People getting scared, skipping, running away before I can continue to even scare them. Um, so it's a lot of trial and error. And then obviously, whatever really works, the great reactions, obviously, those get put into a, a long form video or a short, a TikTok and Instagram, you know, the best of the best moments. Um, there, are, there are a lot of people that do watch all those short form videos and go, wow, that was great. They go to the stream and they see me struggle for 10 minutes to scare anybody and they go, this is not what I expected. <laughs> them, yes, I understand, but it takes hours, sometimes days to get that really great reaction. Right. And I feel like my, on my community that's there on the day-to-day -day basis, they understand that. They get it. Uh, they're there to support me. Uh, and if they do see a great reaction, obviously they're extremely excited because they're, you know, they're to see something really cool. Um, it, it's, you know, it's a struggle, but when it works, it is amazing. Cause it's, it's, it's such a simple concept. It's all about just trying to get that person to focus on you you know, they see a ball guy with a mustache in a dark, dim room. They get scared. Hopefully, they don't run away, disappear, come back in with a different scene or maybe with a different person and jump scare them. And if that works out, it's beautiful. And if they even stick around because they don't know what they're doing, or they're gullible, they don't know how to skip, it's even better because we can keep on scaring them. doesn't happen often, but when it does, it is amazing. Yeah, the payoff's pretty good. Oh, yeah. <laughs> how do you um, How do you get them on camera with you you know how do you find your people uh so the people that help me with my uh with my clips and my uh my content is a culmination of friends and other content creators that do the same thing and sometimes it's even my community that helps me out uh there will be days where i will let my audience know guys this is the concept this is the idea i want if you want go ahead and film a specific concept send it to me and i'll use it right now and there will be days I'll have the community send me 20, 30 different kind of clips and reactions oh that they've sent to me. And I will just gauge, you know, whoever I'm scaring and what to use that day. But there's other days, which are my favorite, is when I have either my wife right next to me, ready at any moment to switch in and play as a hostage. Or if I have a friend that's just one inch away from me, you know, I have the lights out. I try to get them scared, get as much information, pretend to skip, turn the lights on switch seats as fast as possible, as quiet as possible, get the camera back on, get that person to get there and help them forget that they saw the creepy ball guy, relax them, make them forget Then I come back in and jump scare them. Uh, those are the most intricate because those are done in real time in that moment. And the failure rate is so high. But when it does work, I tell you, it is the best reactions because that, <laughs> that the person that's taking my spot to try to let them forget has a, as much time as possible to let them forget because they could just sit there and be like, no, there was no bald guy here. You're, you're crazy. Uh, and they'll finally believe it after a little bit. So those are my favorite reactions. And it's just so much effort, but it works. What uh, what sparked the idea? Where'd you come up with that? Uh, yeah. So with Omega Weight, I've been doing it for four years now. Uh, and I have done trial and error with different skits, ideas, and a lot of things really didn't work out. And my audience, they let me know. They were very apparent. Like, you know, John, what you just did, that didn't work out. Try this. And it wasn't until... About three years ago, I, I figured out a concept where I can get two people together and intercept between both of them and scare them. Either whether I run towards the camera as fast as I can between them and pop up for one second. I realized oh, that worked. They got scared. They didn't expect it. This is great. I'm going to do this. And I quickly realized by going through this process, I was scaring people, but people's attention span over the years has been going down tremendously. And right. it's so hard for people to even sit down and pay attention to another person. So I was like, okay, we need to dumb it down, but make it simple, but effective. And just last year, we thought of the concept, let's just do a fake skip. Whether we have a pre-recorded clip ready to pop up and have it play along and scare them, great. If not, 
uh, have someone else next to me. Uh, that idea, we we came about about a year ago, and it, it's such a simple idea, but such an effective one that has found so much success because we can keep employing it as fast as we can towards other people, and hopefully they don't skip. Uh, so it's been it's been hard, but it's been a, a phenomenal idea. And only about a year ago, we figured it out. You know, I would love to have had you back in 2020 when we were all doing the, uh, when Zoom first got big mm. and we were all doing like the little, the meet and greets or the little wine, you know, wine hours or cocktail hours in the evening and stuff. I'd have loved to have had you like just do that type of thing in the background or right in the middle of the uh, Zoom call at some point. That would have been hilarious. Well, with 2020, that's where Omegle really took off in terms of people really going on there to pass the time. And and that's where I was uh, just starting with the whole concept of jump scaring it. It, it, it just worked so well. Um, and yeah. then obviously we've evolved it to where we are today. Uh, yeah. With the Zoom, though, I never really gave that a chance just because I, I was just scared. <laughs> I also didn't want to ruin everyone's day. I just thought, you know, one person at a time, you know, they're unexpected. They're going on a website. I was scared to go into, you know, a legitimate business meeting. Right. I didn't want to touch that. I want to let people do their own thing in life. I don't want to get in the way. Yeah, yeah. Well, so what kind of reaction do you get from the people that you're scaring? Uh, if I'm lucky, if I'm lucky, they get scared and they don't immediately skip because people usually when they do get scared, they automatically, you know, they're no, they know what they're doing on the website. But they skip, they run away. Uh, the absolute best reactions are the people that are just so scared that they don't even know what to do. They'll take their phone, throw it across the room as if that's going to do anything, or they'll just slam their laptop closed. Uh, other times they just, they freeze up in tension it, and don't know even what to do. It's like a deer standing in the middle of the road with headlights and they freeze up. And those are the best reactions because I'm able to continue manipulating the camera and scare them over and over. And if I'm lucky, I can scare them more than once uh, and reactions are great. And if I'm really lucky, I my, my, I might even get their name as well too uh, from a previous conversation and use it in the next one. And they are dumbfounded how I have their name, even though they just told it me, but they forgot because they've already been scared. So yeah, the reactions are amazing, but not easy. Well, so after the fact, after it's over, mm. what kind of reactions do you get from those people? Uh, well, <laughs> usually they don't stick around uh 90 of the time they all run away but the people that do stick around they do thoroughly enjoy it uh yeah. they're always i would think it like if somebody got me real good i yeah. might be a little bit like ooh at first but it wouldn't take long i'd be cracking up i'd be like yeah. that was good that was most good. of the people that don't leave they do find it very funny and, and they're very dumbfounded and want to when you want to know how i did it typically if they stick around that long i'll let them know yeah yeah for sure but so there's a over, very rare chance Sorry. Over the, the last several years have, uh, you know, what kind of challenges have you run into as far as just getting your content out there? Has it mostly just been figuring out the exact, you know, uh, content to put out there or has there been other challenges that have? Um, well, realistically, it was me just leaving my comfort zone. Uh, for the longest time, I just focused on live streaming and that was about it. And I didn't really focus on anything else. And it wasn't until last year I thought to myself, okay, I got to really try. I got I to gotta post videos on my YouTube, and I really got to take all these reactions that I've been collecting over many years now, and I just need to put them into some short form and give that a try. If it fails, it fails, but I tried. And that's what I did last year. Uh, we did it on TikTok. We did it on Instagram. We did it on YouTube. And the growth was something that I never even anticipated, and the success out of it is nothing that I could even encompass mentally that it would get to. Uh, so it was really just trying to take the content and make it simple, easy, and digestible. Uh, and we found that, honestly, a simple jump scare is just universally loved by everybody. Because at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter what language anybody speaks. If it's just a simple reaction of someone getting scared with almost no words exchanged, anyone can find that funny. And I think that's just been really the biggest success factor is that, you know, people love jump scares. And especially when they see a great reaction They'll remember it, save it, show it to their friend, and, and that just kind of spreads like wildfire. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. I, I uh, enjoy the one with the uh, the people that are pretending to be a plant, and then somebody or a tree, and somebody mm -hmm. comes by and they'll scare the crap out. That's of them. dangerous though in real life. You never know. Well, you never know because somebody's liable will turn around and clock you. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. That's the thing. I, that, that's the scary part because a lot of people ask me, like, "Well, are you going to start scaring people in real life?" 
Uh, I'm not opposed to, but I do love living. Yeah. Yeah. If you're going to scare him, you better make sure you got a buffer between you. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's scary. But I do, I, I do know exactly what you're talking about because yeah, there are true. people that do get very angry. There are instances where I do scare some people and they stick around and they are so mad that I scare them. Um, they, they give it to me. They let me, they let me know what they think. Well, so when that happens, do you give them time to vent or, or do I do, you I, do. I, I, I hear them out. I hear them out. Yeah. I thought you were. It doesn't happen often. And I love to hear them out and I'll let them know, like, you know, I get you're angry, but it was just, it was just a joke. I, I understand. And they'll be like, no, that's not cool. You should have not done that. And I'm like, well, I'm sorry, but it happens. <laughs> have you found, uh, do you, cause there's a lot of people out there that are trying mm -hmm. to create content out there, any type of strategies or advice that you can give to someone that's just kind of getting going. So if, this, if that's a that's a hard question because there's so many different angles to go at it. And I feel like a lot of people uh, that want to get into content creation, whether it be the content that I make or whether it be a completely different niche, it is as simple, but yet so hard. Uh, and the way I explain it is this. If you're going to do content and you really want to be able to get a, a niche or a really grown audience, the most important thing is to do it for the right reasons. A lot of people go into content creation or you know, general social media for the sole purpose of getting a following count and making money, and that's it. Um, and you know, people like that usually get burnt out very quickly, especially if they don't find success, and especially if they do it uh, over a period of time and nothing has happened, they just give up. The biggest thing is you need to do it for the right reasons, a passion, something that you thoroughly actually enjoy doing will take you such a farther distance than doing it for a very empty reason. Uh, and plus at the end of the day, an audience, a view base, they can tell if you're doing it for the wrong reason. If you're doing it for the money, they can tell, they can see right through it. Uh, people are not dumb. They, they can read a person very easily. So doing it for the right reasons is just the most important. And then obviously in terms of finding success, because the content is always changing, trends are always moving. It's stressful. You want to do it where you can find a niche that you could really propel yourself and stand out doing something different. There's nothing wrong with copying anybody, but if you are, make sure you put some type of personality in a different spin that makes you stand out from the rest. So that way people can watch it and be like, that guy's different. That girl's different. I like this person. I'm going to give them a try. Because I feel like a lot of people that go into the whole aspect of like, I'm going to do what that person did and I'm just going to do it exactly like they did. And that typically just doesn't work out because they really didn't give it an actual, honest, genuine spin to it. So, Niche, very important. Passion, important. And then obviously the third one, which I'm not in this category, uh, and not a lot of people are, but if you're really good at something, whether it be a video game and you are absolutely excelled beyond everyone in the world, you don't even need a personality. People are going to watch you just to watch you. Obviously having one is great. Having a personality is great. But if you're really good at something, um, yeah. definitely don't be afraid to show the world because it might turn into something much bigger than you can ever imagine. Yeah, I actually love all of that advice. I, I mean, we, we, when we started the podcast, my son and I, the only thing we wanted to accomplish was just have time to spend together talking about things that we enjoy. That's so we had no, we had uh, no designs that it was going to go anywhere. You know, we just didn't think that it uh, would. And then when it started to get an audience, then we had to kind of figure it out. We're like, well, all right what's happening? What are we going to do with it? And what we kind of figured out was the best thing is, yeah, I keep working to get better at what you're doing, mm -hmm. but don't pay any attention to it. You know, you, you can't ignore it completely because the numbers matter. Of course. But if, if most of the time, if you can concentrate on what you're doing, you know, the product and then not worry about the rest, you'll do okay. And, and if, your only desire is to make money, you're probably going to be disappointed. Yeah. Now this, I, I, once again, could not agree with you more and what you're doing and how you started it. That is, that is the right mindset. That is wholesome. That really, I think is what gets success to happen is by doing it for just the right reasons. Yeah, I agree with that. I think that's it. And I mean, we're 700 or so episodes in now, and I guarantee we would not be doing that if it was just about the, Oh months. yeah. Oh, that's 700 is a lot. I yeah. mean, if you didn't enjoy it, you wouldn't be doing it. That's for sure. That's right. That's, right. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. So we love it. 
we enjoy, you know, we enjoy, uh, my son doesn't really like interacting with people, but he loves the behind the scenes stuff. I know it's, it amuses me because he's a librarian and I'm like, oh, okay. you're dealing with people all day long, which maybe that's why he has trouble. Doesn't want to be on camera, but he loves the behind the scenes stuff. And I discovered, I kind of like talking to people. So here we are. Not so to, it's a beautiful synergy. Now, if I could just add in some jump scares, we could have something. No, you don't, you don't, you don't have to do jump scares to necessarily. <laughs> yeah, I want to give your audience a heart attack. But that, that's a beautiful way of looking at it as well, too. I mean, at the moment, uh, my team is basically just a few friends and my wife that helps me. I mean, there are many times that she is on standby at any moment, ready to jump in and play a hostage for me. But she's also ready to help me on behind the scenes of maybe thinking a new angle, a new idea that I can execute that she thought of that I would have not thought of. So that's important. That's good. And and that's, that's awesome that you have your son in the behind the scenes in, in, from a different angle. It really helps. Right. Well, yeah, I, I love that because it's so important to have the support of family, especially when you're working on passion stuff mm -hmm. because passion projects, it usually takes a while before you make any money. So you, you know, you need a, a partner or, or some support that's going to be uh, patient while you're <laughs> while you're working through that and then if they're willing to help too oh there you go can't beat that oh, it's, it's it's that works so beautifully trust me i know uh, and especially with the passion project there's a lot of times that it doesn't work out i mean especially with with omega content that i was doing four years ago there was a solid year that i was trying a different niche a different idea a different skit a different idea every day for a year and i think i had almost no growth nothing my channel did not move, but I streamed every day a different idea. And I tried something all the time. And then eventually I found something that really resonated with the audience, something that really worked and it took off. So never be discouraged. Uh, absolutely. I agree with yeah, you. Yeah, but, but look how long you had to put into it. Oh, yeah. It's kind of the key. I mean, you of course, you've got those instant successes that you hear about. But for most of us, it's it's really about the effort. And oh, just yeah. being consistent and being, you know, willing to to adjust and to try different things. Mm -hmm. Couldn't yeah. agree with you. What would you uh, What would you be doing if you weren't doing this? That is such a great question because I think about this sometimes. My parents want me to go to college very bad uh, to yeah. either be a chiropractor or to be a nurse. Um, my mom personally wanted me to be a pastor at a church. Uh, that's what she really wanted me to do. Uh, so I'm not going to lie to you. I have no idea what I would be doing. I'm not sure if I would have been happy with uh, with what I was going to do in college, uh, because I know for a fact I didn't want to be a chiropractor, uh, but my mom wanted me to be one. But I didn't <laughs> want to do it. But I was I, I didn't want to disappoint my family. So I'm like, OK, I'm going to be a chiropractor. Um, I look back. I, I don't I don't think that was my call. I don't think I would have been too passionate about being a chiropractor. Yeah. Well, so how is the family supporting you now that you're having some success? It was uh, a, a lot of uh, a lot of disappointment for many <laughs> years of, wow, you didn't go to college. You didn't do this. You're still doing the whole video thing. Um, wow. You know, and then when things started really working and things started really blowing up and things really took onto a massive snowball effect of success, uh, everyone's like, wow. I knew you'd make it. You did so good. I'm so <laughs> proud of you. Uh, you know, that's so great. We should hang out. Um, but for the most part, though, in terms of like the close family and relatives, they're very supportive. Um, even my one of my brothers is very supportive of me since the very beginning. So I'm very happy for that. My mom and dad, obviously, there was a little bit of turmoil and disappointment because they wanted me to do something that, you know, they would have been proud of, like, you know, being a nurse, a chiropractor or whatnot. But they are very proud of me now um, just because they see that I found success, happiness, and uh, they know that it's my passion. Well, you know, as a parent, we just want to make sure our kids are doing something that they can survive. Of course. I, I, you know, I just, and, and so I get it as a parent. You're like, yeah, chiropractor. That's what you need to go into. Or maybe even pastor. You know, let's let's make sure you've got a, a profession that's going to be here. With yes. that. It's a little, you know, kind of like uh, if you were going into acting, you mm -hmm. know, your parents might be like, what's what's your backup plan? Yep, that, I, I cannot express how many times I heard that. <laughs> but but then once it works, mm -hmm. you know, once that passion is has has paid off, well then yeah, they're 
you know, families are family. They're going to support you. And it's really not that they're not supporting you. It's just that they're concerned and want to make sure you're okay. No, absolutely. I mean, I, I totally understand the perspective of my parents because I mean, when I started doing streaming, it was 2015. It was an it's absolute infancy. Yeah. Really nobody knew about it. And it wasn't really even a genuine career choice. So I get the whole entire, you know, worry aspect of it. I, I get it now. Um, I'm looking from them, you know, it didn't look like something I was doing that was going to be viable and something that I could actually uh, build a livelihood and a career out of. So I a hundred percent wholeheartedly understand them now. <laughs> but that being said, you figured out something that you like doing. It turned into a passion and here you are. Yep. It is. I trust me when I say this, I never could have imagined it getting to where it is today. And I'm beyond blessed to be in the situation that, in position that I am in right now. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's, pretty awesome that's pretty great do you have anything like on the horizon you, anything new that you're getting ready to to try yes yes uh so i stream every single day so i go sometimes a few days where i just cannot scare anyone in a worthwhile way or people know what's going on now or they know me or they know the concept of a fake skip or a gem scare coming so it's hard to really catch people off guard so i've been thinking in the back of my mind consistently I need to do something where I can still continue with my personality, maybe even still scare people in a completely different medium, a completely different idea, uh, and maybe even up my production in a much bigger way. Uh, I definitely this year want to try some different things uh, that might not even have to do anything with gem scaring people online, but maybe something to do with real life and actually scaring people in real life uh, and making a much bigger production uh, in terms of, uh, you know, bringing in content creators and friends to help me out. What if you, <laughs> I don't know if this would uh, go over too well, but what if you did a uh, interview show and you're bringing people on and just doing an actual interview, but at some point during the interview, you try to scare the crap out of Uh So, I mean, that is one concept I was thinking of. Uh, and that's not even a bad idea as well, too. I, uh, I, I still don't know what that exact idea is going to be that I'm going to execute this year, but I do have friends and family that are, you know, guiding me and giving me concept ideas as well as, uh, you know, friends that, you know, do the exact same content as me telling me how they can help me out. I'm, I don't know what it's going to be just yet, but I do know that I'm going to enjoy it. And if it fails, it fails. But if it succeeds, awesome. If not, I tried. Yeah. And you try something else. Yep. Yeah. I love that. I love that. So do you, are you just one of those uh, types of people that doesn't normally get down, you know, cause you're streaming every day. So I know every single day you're not feeling a hundred percent. Oh yeah. How do you get through the days where you're a little off or you're, you're not feeling well or you're grumpy or whatever it is. Yeah, no, I, trust me, there are so many days that I am so not in the mood to scare people <laughs> or be in front of a camera. But I think what really just gets me through it is the massive accountability that I have with my very loving community that I built over nine years. There are people that are watching me that have been watching me since they were in elementary school. Now they're going to college now uh, and they still are there supporting me and letting me know how their life is going. And I just feel like a, that's the biggest motivating factor, even though there might be days that I'm not really necessarily interested in scaring people, I'll still do it and I'll still get great reactions. But the biggest factor is the, the community that I've built. They're the biggest accountability that I don't want to let down. And, uh, you know, they really do bring happiness to me at the end of the day, even if I don't have a great stream. You know, I still had a great time with them. And I think that's what really just uh, brings me back to doing it every single day and really enjoying it. And if it wasn't for the community, I think I would have given it up a long time ago. Um, just because, you know, if it was to do everything off stream and just doing it in front of a camera, I feel like it might have been like an echo chamber of really nothingness and not really feeling like there's that strong bind in community. So, yeah, I, I love the fact that you live stream it because they, you're right. That probably helped build that community. Oh, yeah. I, I cannot express to you how many days I did not want to scare people. And those are some of the days that I've gotten some of the best reactions I've ever gotten in my entire life. And I will finish that stream and go, wow. And I was going to not stream? Really? I was going to miss out on that? Well, and those are the days at the end of it. You're probably, you're then, you're probably in a good mood. Oh, yeah. No. You're like, I don't even know why I didn't want to do that. That was great. No, of course. Of course. So. <laughs> I, that, that's the biggest factor for me is just the community and wanting to be there every day. Yeah, because we 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 don't do live uh, very often. Occasionally we'll go live, but but for the most part we're recorded. But we normally release four or five episodes a week. So 
yeah, that's a lot. So it means we're recording a ton of times. And I, you know, it's most of the time I'm very excited about recording. Uh, not every time, you know, sometimes you're having a bad day or something's going on, in, you know, in your personal life, or maybe you're a little under the weather. You definitely don't feel like it that day, but you're right. You know, when you've got support and you've got a kind of a, an audience or a fan base, it does motivate you because you don't want to disappoint somebody. You know, you're like, hey, we've entered this agreement together. You've agreed to watch. I've agreed to pr provide content. I don't want to mess that up. And, you, you know, online, it can be very fickle. You know, you skip a couple, and next thing you know, maybe that audience moves to somebody else. So it's it's a it's a grind at times. That that is also a very good point that you brought up. The internet is ever changing. I feel like realistically, one week of the internet is like one year. Yeah, that's why I said nine years is a ton of time. Yeah, it, it's so fast paced because if you're not there to fill in that part where someone watches, and they enjoy you, and you're not there anymore, they're going to move on to somebody else, yeah. and they might never come back to you. So that's. That's also a very big driving uh, fire underneath me to be like, okay, not only do I want to make everybody happy and keep the accountability, but I also want to continue what I got going here. You know, keep that role going. Yeah, it always, uh, like like when I see uh, another podcast disappear, mm -hmm. you know, of somebody that maybe I was just aware of, you know, maybe I didn't even listen to it, but I knew they were doing a podcast and then they stop or whatever. I always have that little feeling, oh, yeah, I hate to see that. You know, I never listened, so I didn't help you at all. But just the fact that we're, you know, in this space together, I hate to see anybody, you know, no, doing something that they obviously at least temporarily love. Yeah, no, I've seen it all the time as well, too, with other content creators that they, I, they just get burnt out um, and then they give up. And I think this is the big factor for that is just not having a good balance in life. Um, I think having a balance with, it, whether it be content creation or whatever you do in life that you passionately enjoy, make sure you do it with a balance so that you don't pickle it out mentally and burn out. Because there is, I, I definitely, when I first started streaming many, many, many years ago, I was doing it too much. I was doing eight hours every day for wow. years. And I realized maybe eight hours every day, seven days a week, months on end, never taking a day off. I'm getting a little bit mentally tired. So I'm going to dial it back and change it up and do something that I enjoy. And that was the best thing. So right now I do only four or five hours a day. And as much as that seems like a lot, it's really not. It's, it's it, you know, it's super manageable. I still have a very normal life. And I think that's what really gives me even more of a push to do it because I'm excited to do it even more because I, it's not my whole day. Right. Yeah. We found something similar. We, uh, uh, you know, I was, I had a day job working in a local hospital system and still found time to spend, you know, several hours a day doing what I really wanted to do until it got to the point uh, this past November, we we're fine. You know, we finally got the podcast to the point that I was able to walk away from, you know, the day job. So now this is the job. So now, and, and strangely enough, since I freed up time, I seem to have less, less time. I know that makes no sense, but it's like I had the the free no, time. It does. It does. And, and yeah, and then I'm like, oh, now I can do all this other stuff. And then once you start bringing all that other stuff in, you're like, yeah, now I'm really busy. <laughs> no, you, no, I, that that makes 100% sense because even if you're only doing it for a few hours a day, the preparation behind the scenes, the time, the effort, all that, it starts revolving around your whole entire day. And before you figure it out, you didn't really have too much time for yourself. So I 100% understand that. Yeah, I knew you would. I knew you get it because it's uh, uh, yes, we're mm -hmm. doing something we absolutely love, but there, there, it isn't like it's just you show up and it's easy. I mean, yeah. there's a ton of time involved, and that's the in the digital space. I think that's the main issue. I think it's just it's it's a time suck. I manage, yeah, no, trust yeah. me, I I know, and I have so many other friends that do content just like me. Uh, some of them are so much more larger on a scale that I can't even mentally conceive with their audiences. Yeah. And I know for a fact that they go too hard. They will do 10, 12 hours a day, nonstop. And they never really even enjoy their own lives. Um, so I, trust me, I yeah. see it. it it's a balancing act. Oh yeah, trust me, it is. And I do think that a lot of a lot of people fail because they just burn themselves out. Mm -hmm. they they can't figure out how to pace it and, and do the time management thing before they get to the point that they're just like, I can't do it. Anymore. 
no back 100 percent. yeah yeah do you have creators that you watch to you know not necessarily to to get ideas from but just kind of to to get exposed to different ideas yeah so i work with a lot of other content creators that do the exact same content as me and uh, one of them is named something about chickens. He does content where he jump scares people, does magic tricks. Um, I've met up with him in real life. We've collaborated. We've talked in real life. We've done so wow. many different projects together. Uh, other content creators like Luke AFK, uh, he does Omega content as well too, jump scares people. I've met up with him in real life. You know, we've really thought of different avenues, different ideas. And there's other people that I've collaborated with and other friends that I know that don't even do the Omega jump scaring content that I have met up in real life. And we you know we've, converse and got different ideas of you know how other things should be executed so and I, I think that's just also just a really important way of growing in the community that i'm in in any community that you live in uh that you grow in that you want to really you know get yourself out there with the other people that are doing the exact same thing to get a better idea yeah yeah i love that i like it have any any consideration at some point to try something like acting where uh, you're basically acting now yeah, I mean, so on stream, it's all improv, which I, uh, you know, I love doing that just because it's it just comes naturally because I've been doing it for so many right. years. Ago. <laughs> uh, that's also something I've been talking to my wife about as well. Maybe, uh, you know, I still want to keep doing YouTube for many years, hopefully another decade to come and all this consecration. But uh, something that I'd love to do is maybe uh, do a film of some sort or be a, a creepy character in something and yeah. uh, act something. I definitely want to do something like that. And I've talked to friends that do film. Uh, and a bunch of different work with acting. So I, I'm interested in that kind of avenue. Yeah, I could totally <laughs> see you popping up on either, like either uh, something scary or maybe just like a uh, a comedy, mm -hmm. uh, you know, a, a sitcom where you're kind of the creepy guy. And I wouldn't mind. I'd love to play. Or just that. the odd guy, maybe just the odd neighbor or whatever. I, I, yeah. I would watch that. I think you'd be hilarious. I, I mean, personally, if I had an opportunity, love to do a, a creepy or a bad guy. Oh, yeah. That'd be fun. Well, like there's so many shows out there now where even the villains or the 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 secondary characters, they're interesting because the writing's so good. Mm -hmm. So you don't necessarily have to be the star of the show to oh, have really good roles and stuff. I don't know. I, although if you were leading like a movie where you were solving a mystery or a crime or something, I'd totally watch that. Well, I appreciate it. I, I hope <laughs> maybe one day over the horizon, I'll be doing that. <laughs> well, that's um, down the road. Thank you so much. You got to come back. I, you know, maybe we can revisit uh, later in the year and kind of see where where you I, decided to go into. Uh, you know, what you ventured into next. I am so down, just because I know this year is a big year for me and trying something new. Uh, yes. I obviously know I'm not going to be doing what I'm doing forever, but I definitely want to try so many different avenues. So maybe in a year from now, who knows what I'll be doing? Yeah. When, when when you get an idea, do you have a book or something that you keep keep uh, written in no, or you just try to I, remember I, it? I go day by day. If I have an idea, I execute it immediately within the hour. That. That's awesome. I, I don't put anything down on paper. My wife does, though, thankfully, oh, because she good. has an agenda. So, I you know, when it comes to really important things, she lets me know what we got to do. Yeah, but when yeah she keeps ideas, on. <laughs> yeah, when, but when there's an idea, I act on it immediately. Yeah, I love that I because I, that's. I'm good about writing stuff down. I'll I'll get to that at some point. And then you never get to it. Yeah. So, yeah, I think uh, I think that's also just been a big drive for me is just trying something on the spot all the time. I, I do it so many times also on stream where I'll just get an idea in that exact moment and in 20 minutes I'm doing it. And I, I might be failing every try, but I'm trying it. I love it. I love it. Well, John, thank you so much. This has been terrific. You know, before I let you go, uh, go through your social media stuff. Where can we find your content if we want to? Absolutely. Uh, so I live stream every single day on YouTube. My YouTube channel is Hyphonics. Uh, and then after I'm done with my streams, I do post videos on that channel as well. And I post shorts on Instagram and TikTok, which my Instagram is official underscore Hyphonics. And my TikTok is Hyphonics YT. Uh, that's where all I do my content for the time being. Uh, but if you want to see the real, uh, the grind of it, I do it all on my YouTube. Yeah. Yeah. And it's really well done. You can tell you're on there every day. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you once again so much for your time. Thank you so much for, uh, you know, interviewing me. It was a pleasure. And I hope that you have an absolutely amazing day. Yeah. Same to you, John. Hold on uh, one second. So that was uh, John. Uh, Hephonics is his online name. 
I, I know you already know who he is, but if, if you don't, uh, definitely check out some of his stuff. It's um, it's well done. It's funny. You know, at times maybe just slightly uh, creepy, but not not in a bad way. I mean, uh, only in a good way. I think uh, John, uh, the stuff he does is really entertaining. So so check him out. Give him a a, a look. You know, I love giving other content creators a little bit of time. But there's so many out there that I, I don't do it unless it's someone that I, I really like. So, so John is uh, just terrific. I hope you uh, hope you enjoyed that. I hope you enjoy what we're doing. Uh, and thank you for tuning in uh, with us. If you're finding us for the first time, so thrilled that you're here. We definitely need your support um, if you're a watcher. Our YouTube channel is MeisterCon Pod. Please subscribe. That helps us out so much. So, so please subscribe if you're a listener. Wherever you listen to your podcast at, just subscribe there. That'll help us as well. Uh, IMDB, which is the entertainment database, imdb.com, recently named us a top 100 podcast. There's like 15 million podcasts out there to, um, to make a top 100 list. Really special to us. I'm sure it has a lot to do with the quality of guests that we bring on the program. We've um, today we put out episode 724, I think, and you can find all of those audio and video on our website, meistercon.com. So definitely check us out there if we're doing anything in studio, if we're covering a convention, if we're uh, going live. It'll all be on the website, meistercon.com, and you can find all our, uh, all our content there as well. Thank you guys so, so much. I really, uh, really enjoyed that one today. I, I knew I would because, you know, one of the things I like about John is that he's taken a decade to get where he is right now. And that's very similar to, to the journey that Brett and I have had with the podcast. You know, we started out... Um, June the 4th, 2013, as a Facebook page. And we were just posting content that we enjoyed. We started podcasting at the uh, uh, beginning of 2019, early January 2019. And here we are, you know, and it's taking uh, a ton of work. It's been maybe not quite a full-time job, but pretty close to a, a full-time job, um, even while we're both working actual full-time jobs, if that, if that makes sense. It's done well enough that I was able to retire and do this uh, full-time. So grateful. You know, we got a podcast studio going pretty well. Uh, don't worry. Brett has no um, plans to retire as a librarian anytime soon. I think he, he loves it. He's going to be doing that for decades. Um, but we're lucky enough that, that he has the time to edit and to, to do the behind the scenes stuff for us. I, I don't know what I do without him. Thank you guys so, so much till next time. Bye everybody. Hi everybody. I'm once again here to ask for your support. It's been a big year for the two opinionated podcast back in February. We got to live out a dream moderate for William Shatner here in our hometown. In May, we passed 100,000 downloads on our YouTube channel, and we followed that up in June with 50,000 downloads on the audio side. We recently posted our 600th episode, which is pretty good volume for just a uh, father and son operation. You know, not too many podcasts can keep that volume up. We've been doing this now for four and a half years, 600 plus episodes. We recently hit 1,000 subscribers on our YouTube channel, which is a really big deal for us because we've always gotten the views but have struggled to get people to subscribe. So that 1,000 was a big deal for us. And best of all, we were recently named one of the top podcasts on IMDb, which is the entertainment database. You know, those that are ahead of us, we came in at number 82. Those that are ahead of us are bigger companies like Disney, mostly Marvel, and Joe Rogan, that type of uh, podcast. So for us, being just a, a small West Virginia father and son podcast, 
to be in the top 100 out of 15 million. That's a pretty big deal for us. So thank you for everything you've done for us so far. Got a couple little ways, though, that you can help us, and they're free, and they're really easy. If you haven't checked out our YouTube channel yet, please go to YouTube. It's under MeisterCon Pod. Just hit subscribe. It's free. doesn't cost you anything. really helps us a ton. And maybe even more important, if you could go to IMDB, imdb.com, look up the Two Opinionated Podcast, and just look around the page. Just having that traffic on the page really helps us out. So that's a couple easy ways that you can support us, even if you're not listening or watching all of the time. And we want you to listen and watch, because I think that our our guest list, I would put up against anybody, any other show, podcast, anybody out there. I think our guest list holds up. So please check us out. You you probably will find somebody that you like or maybe somebody that you didn't know you liked but kind of discovered them on there. There's tons of that. If you're into music, we have that too. If you like books, we've got authors on there. If you if you're more into what goes on behind the scenes in the entertainment world, you know, we've got producers, directors, um video artists, anything you can think of that happens behind the scenes, we've had them on the show. So definitely check us out. Thank you guys so, so much. Until next time. Bye, everybody.